The media has been speaking to multiple victims and their parents following the mass shooting that took place in Parkland, Florida. And some of those interviews, some of those appearances are incredibly difficult to watch, but it's important to hear their stories and their perspectives. For the first time, I feel as though people who have experienced this type of carnage are angry at the fact that the only thing that they've been offered by people like Donald Trump is prayer or condolences. They really want more. And one of the interviews that I saw that really, that I found compelling was that of Lori Alderdef, Alherdef. And she tragically lost her daughter in this shooting, 14 year old Elisa. And she went on CNN to essentially demand that Trump do something about this. Let's take a look. President Trump, you say, what can you do? You can stop the guns from getting into these children's hands. Put metal detectors at every entrance to the schools. What can you do? You can do a lot. This is not fair to our families that our children go to school and have to get killed. I just spent the last two hours putting the burial arrangements for my daughter's funeral, who's 14. President Trump, please do something. Um, it's a difficult video to watch. We didn't even show you the, the, the full interview. Um, and I feel her anger. I mean, I, 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 not to the same extent as she did. I didn't lose a daughter, uh, but I, I respect the fact that she is aggressively calling for action because that's what we desperately need. Um, well, so a couple of things here. I mean, and we'll have the full uh, link to the full video below. CNN do a good job of, of getting that interview, and uh, their anchor there uh, was broken up about it too, and I think rightfully so. I got kids; it's hard not to tear up as you watch her. Uh, she talks about how she saw her daughter shot through the heart, the head, and the hand. Um, I think that that little explosion there on air is what the whole country is feeling now. Um, are you telling us there's nothing we can do? We just have to sit there and take it and watch our 14 year old kids be murdered in front of us. And you tell me there's nothing I could do? And she was desperate to find any solution. I don't know, is it metal detectors to schools? What is it? It's something, right? And and the reality is we know what the answer is and, and we know what that the politicians will not act. Uh, and so it's a certainty, I mean, we had, the worst mass shooting in recent history in Las Vegas, 58 killed, hundreds upon hundreds wounded. We had school children massacred in Newtown, we didn't do anything. We had a congresswoman, Gabby Gifford, shot in the head, we didn't do anything. We had a Republican get shot, we didn't do anything, a Republican politician. I mean, we had a Republican politician get shot and then he himself said he doesn't want gun control. I mean, that NRA money is powerful. It really is. So this is what corruption looks like, and that is, and it, that's the rage that it that it leads to. And so, as a country, I feel like we're getting to a point. Are you telling me we can't solve any of our problems, no matter how much we all agree? Uh, on on the Dreamers, over eighty percent of Americans agree that they should stay and have a pathway to citizenship. Nope, you can't get it. On guns, 93% of Americans want a federal background check, including overwhelming majority of NRA members. No, we can't get it, because the NRA represents gun manufacturers and they make more money when your kids die. Because right now everybody in a panic is buying more guns. So that woman right there, that mom right there represents us all. You're telling us there's nothing we can do about any of these things. I mean, I can name you a dozen proposals that have over 80% approval in the country, and none of them can get passed because the politicians get bribed to do the opposite. It's maddening. That's what happens when we don't run our own country. We've lost our democracy, and all we have left is rage. I think that's absolutely right. That was so hard to watch for me because, like I said in the last hour, I grew up 20 minutes from Parkland. Parkland is such a peaceful place, just like the town I grew up in. And to know that this town will never be the same. Stoneman Douglas High School will never be the same. The trauma of those kids in that school building, those kids will never 
be the same. And there's people who are gonna watch this video and they're gonna say that we're we're getting political. And the answer to that question is you were right, we're getting political because our politicians have a solemn obligation to protect us. They are supposed to, public safety is one of the number one jobs of government. And what we have here is a case of willful negligence on behalf of Republicans in Congress and Republican state legislatures. And it is time for this negligence to end. And we've got to do something. This no mother should have to bury her 14 year old child because, because we could have fixed this problem. We could have banned AR 15s a long time ago. We could have banned them after Sandy Hook. We could have banned them after Las Vegas. We could have banned them after Columbine. But over and over again, as you said, Anna, the NRA's money and their ability to score votes is so powerful that Republicans quiver. And, and I, I, the one moment that from this whole thing that caught my eye was the press conference that night that the governor gave when he was asked the question about the AR-15s, and he just looked like a deer in headlights. Like, can I cross the NRA? Can I not cross so the NRA? Pathetic. Until the sheriff got up and said, "Listen, this sheriff here who runs this county." It's, it's pretty clear to me, if you are mentally ill, you're getting treated for mental illness, you shouldn't be near guns, you should be able to purchase a gun. Those two things don't mix. That's what Sheriff Israel said, and he couldn't be more right. And the fact that common sense cannot prevail because a political lobby has so much power, it, it's beyond me, it's actually, absolutely beyond me. I actually wanna make one more point about this that I, I'm not seeing anywhere and it's driving me crazy. During the campaign, during Trump's campaign, one thing that he said that did cause quite a stir, even among conservatives, that he thought women who get abortion should be punished because he believed that these women are killing babies, right? Those women should be punished. But he doesn't have the same type of you know rhetoric when it comes to individuals and their guns, right? So women who, who carry out abortion should be punished, but we shouldn't do anything about the gun laws that allow for 19 year olds like the, sh the shooter in this case to purchase something like an AR-15. I mean, it's insane, it's insane. So that double standard should anger everyone. I don't care what your political ideology is. We know what the numbers are when it comes to you know approval for certain types of gun legislation. And they don't represent us, these politicians don't represent no. us. They represent the NRA, they represent the gun manufacturers. We have such a deeply corrupt system and it's pathetic. And I mean, the question I ask myself is where are these, where's the pro-life agenda now? Where are they talking about we care about life, we care about the life of these high schoolers, we care about the life of those kindergartners in Sandy Hook. They are eerily silent. Yes. But when it comes to the life of an unborn baby, they're like, oh no, we've gotta protect it. When it comes to women's uterus, oh no, we've gotta protect it. But when it comes to being pro-life for high school students who want nothing more than to learn geography. I think there's a story about the beat Mr. Beagle, like yeah, the geography teacher. teacher who opened his classroom door to save children and in the process of opening his classroom door lost his life. Like where's his pro-life? Where's his, where, where are you guys defending his life? I don't see any pro-lifers protesting in front of the NRA building. You're there to hound women in the most difficult situation of their lives. But the people who actually pay our politicians to allow these murders to happen nonstop, yet somehow you can't figure out how to protest that. I'm gonna show the, well, let's go to the mother one more time here, video seven. Barron goes to school, let's protect Barron. And let's, not, let's also protect all these other kids here in Parkland, in Florida, and everyone, everywhere else in the United States of America. Because we earned it, just like how you earn the right to protect Barron. You need to help us now. But that's the problem. Uh, the elites are fine, Barron's fine, thank God. Uh, he's got a lot of protection, and so uh, they think it's not gonna happen to us. And so Rick Scott in that moment that Richard described uh, cares more about the NRA than he does about your kids. He cares more about his political career than all those 14 year olds murdered uh, in his state. So the elites think it's not my problem, it's your problem and I still keep getting the checks. That's the sorry, sorry state we're in. So well, we share that mother's rage. You just watched the video by the Young Turks, home of the revolution. If you'd like to get a lot more than that, get the full show by becoming a member, tytnetwork.com slash join.